Welcome to a new episode of Asia Drinking. Pour yourself a drink and let's get started. For today's episode of Asia Drinking, we have a very inspiring guest who came all the way here from Martinique Island in the French Caribbean. This would be Gregory Vernon, the owner and master distiller of Nason Distillery, famous for producing some of the world's finest rum agricoles. Recently, Gregory was in Singapore to conduct tasting sessions with their partner and importer, La Maison de Whisky. Thanks to their invitation, we sat down with Gregory in the office of La Maison to have a chat about how Gregory makes his rums, grows his organic sugarcane, and ages his rums in the unique climate of Martinique. As we shared a few drinks and laughs, we also talked about Martinique's cultural diversity, the kind of practical jokes that Gregory plays on his drinking friends, and how to make their favorite Martinican cocktail. We hope you enjoy. My, my childhood was with, like every child, uh, <laughs> very quiet. And, uh, uh, yeah. I do all my study in a public school. Uh, my parents were uh, doctors. Mm. So I had a very quiet uh, childhood, and uh, Martinique is a little paradise. Uh, we are a little product from, uh, not now, it has changed with problem of drugs, but uh, during my childhood it was a very quiet, uh, quiet things. I grew in with a love of uh, sea, I made a lot of uh, sailing, fishing, so my childhood, what I, I can remember, a lot of friendship. Uh, I still have the same friends uh, since I uh, was five years old. <laughs> same group. Uh, our culture, our culture is a. Uh, yeah, how would you, you know, what uh, what what one thing that what was very in, it, interesting me when I came to your country is uh, the I saw a lot of culture. And it's the same in my island. It's a small island, but uh, with a lot of different uh, culture and a lot of tolerance between the the difference. So Chinese people, Indian people, Creole. My grandfather was a black guy. It was the last black guy who was a rum factory. His wife was uh, white, a Russian woman, Jewish, so we always, I grew up with a lot of um, mix, melange, maybe it, uh, maybe you can feel it in my products today, I don't know, uh, but uh, uh, Martinique culture is a lot about uh, music, food, mm. uh, you talk about culture, some culture too about uh, books. And yes, I, uh, I have a chance to stay until my uh, baccalaureate. I was 19 years and after I went in Paris during five years to make some study. And I came back after. You know, you're very respected today for you know, the incredible reputation and the quality of Nason's rums. But your grandfather, Jean Nason is also mm -hmm. an important figure because he's a passionate rum maker. He he has taught the Seville steels. He he you know designed the iconic square bottling. And so, do you have any memorable experiences uh, at the distillery with your grandfather? And you know, how do you feel about um, what do you think in your mind when you when you saw grandfather working? Uh, I think that my grandfather was a. Uh... Uh, was one of the first who has a mathematical approach. He was the first black guy who was a graduate from uh, l'Institut Supérieur de Chimie de Paris. And he went, when he came back, he came back with uh, another way of thinking, I think, about fermentation, about uh, distillation. You know, everything has a word. So what we call today organic at this time, it was only the good sense. <laughs> It's uh, now we want to put a word on everything, but uh, I think he was in advance for his periods, and he was not every time uh, very no understand by his peers. Yeah. But uh, he's still present with us. He has a. We didn't invent anything. We just uh, following 
the steps he puts on the factory. Mm. And and I mean, I, I think I'm jumping ahead, but it's okay. I understand that he 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 made all the the, the adjustments on mm-hmm. the, the Seville, the famous Seville steel that everyone you know like talk about. Mm-hmm. He made all the adjustments on the steels. He made the modifications. Um, do you still use the same settings, or do you do you change it as part of you know? It's a good question. <laughs> we ask sometimes the question. Don't forget that uh, uh, it depends on the degrees of your of your wine. So you can only have the same regulation on the column. But for our 19 years, I was uh, I have some plans of him, who still has a writing by hand, and I saw uh, something what we call today the picador, is the crushing cane. And he has a plan from 15 years, and I said, fuck, it's only this year that I can do the same thing with the Brazilian. He has a lot of years in advance. Uh, and I think he made a really interesting, wo- interesting wo- work sorry, with a fermentation. For me, fermentation is, and sugar cane is 90% of your products. You can have the best column of the world, you can do a good rum with a shit fermentation. It's impossible. What sort of um, interesting work in fermentation or did, you know, interesting um, uh, stories did? Uh, at this time, in the 80s, we didn't have the same technology than today. So something I remember, today I, have the, I can control the temperature. You couldn't do this at this time, so I remember a very big uh, ventilator. Fine. Fan, that he was uh, pushing around the fermentation tank for try to control the temperature. He he had understand these important things, but we didn't have the same tools. For s- then he understood that if you you need the right temperature to uh, to let the right bacteria and you know the right any kind of. When you do a long time fermentation, you have to control it because. Uh, uh, you can have some bacteria. So if you cool down, you can control the bacteria. Uh, so sometimes I think the difference between today, today you don't have bad rums. Uh, at this time you could have fantastic rums and some rums who were really so-so because you didn't have the same tools, that's all. I think the difference between this period and today is that today we have more regularity, but it doesn't mean that the room is better. In the course of managing it, um, are there a few things that you have done differently from what your grandfather had done previously at the distillery? First one I remember, uh, to the previous question, my grandfather always told me that my factory has to be very clean because the room takes all the odorous off around the factory. So if it smells shit, your room will be shit. So uh, it's something we have to take care about it. Uh, what I'm doing differently, the difference is that now I have some modern things, something very special, a drone. A drone for you means nothing in agriculture, but for us it's a revolution. When you do an hectare of sugarcane, all the space of your sugarcane is uh, one meter 75. So his guy has to walk for control everything. One hectare is six kilometers when you walk. Today with a drone in five minutes, I know everything. So I just have better material. Uh, but I don't do differently from him, not a lot. I see, so, so the, the drone, how does the drone um, help to? I'm in my car, I have my camera and I can see if I have a grass in a place. I don't have to work, and I, I, it's a lot of gain of time. It's very interesting. Now you have some uh, cameras, uh, the spectrometer. When you can see the coloration, you know if you need some uh, fertilizer, some potassium, some phosphor. It's it's changed a lot of things for us. Yeah, that's really high tech. It's like yeah, it's because a lot of people think agriculture is only with the. Like this, with the hearts, you know. No, it's not like this. That's really interesting. Um, and um, do you remember how you felt when you first took over the, the, the distillery? 
because I remember that you were maybe only 23 years old. Yes, I was a uh, really naive and <laughs> crazy. <laughs> when you're 23, you think you can uh, run all over the world. You don't feel what's the importance of the job and you're a little crazy, you want to do everything. So thanks, I was young. If I had 50, I think I... When I, the factory was in really bad shape, but I was really exciting about this, so... And I didn't do it by myself. I was my mother with me, so it's a... It's really a beautiful family history. Uh, and uh, there, there was a lot of uh, people who knows me since I was kids, I was baby. So they help us a lot. A lot of the owners of the other rum factory who knows me very small and who was friend of my grandfather, they helped me a lot. You know, in, our, in, my, in your job, in my job, we have to be very modest. We always have to learn with other people. So that's what I did. I just uh, opened my ears, opened my eyes, and uh, tried to understand. Mm. Do, you, do you feel like um, um, you had a goal in mind when, when you first started um, taking over Mixer? Yes, I was right, and the first goal was to continue the factory. I had a fantastic distillers who were with me, Emmanuel Fedronik, who finished my formation, my learning, who tried to finish it. Uh, and uh, in uh, our 95, 96, our after our first uh, harvest in 97, we begin to have uh, medals to competition. And for us, it was really impressive. We didn't imagine we could arrive to, to do this. And the personnel was very proud to they understand that we were not here for selling the factory, but we were here for a long time. So today I have a, we are, I saw another question when you asked us how many we are. We are around 40 people, and uh, uh, some here works with me. I have a third generation. So it's like a family business for everybody. So, so gen three generations in, in. Some of my, uh, some of people who works with me, yes, have a third generation. Oh, well, okay. So, you know, if you're, you're working with you know, all, all your family members, are there any, um, uh, it's like a like a family-owned business. Are there any interesting um, react, you know, interactions in your family? Do you um, are you not able to, to stop talking about rum when you're at family gatherings? With my mother, we talk a lot of business. It's normal. With my children, no, I talk. They they ask a lot of questions about my business. Even when I'm almost when I'm here, I was with my son here. who was studying in Canada. I tell you, okay, Dad, how is it? What will we do? It's interesting about this, so we have to share. But uh, with my wife, we try to, when we arrive home, we said, okay, now we don't talk about business and other things. Going back to, to my, my earlier question, could you take us through your, your daily routine as a, as, a, as a owner and as a distiller at, at Laison? What do you do? It depends on the season, when it's the harvest right now. No. 15 years ago, I used to wake up at 4 a.m. Now it's finished for me. <laughs> I don't I wake up at uh, 6, and I try to be at work at uh, half past 6, 7. I, I live very close from my factory. Uh, unfortunately, today we spend too much time in papers. Uh, more. Uh, uh, I don't spend enough time for me in my land and in my factory. I have a, now I format uh, distillers who's with me, who my chief of the factory, and now he's as good as me, so I trust in him and uh, it's very comfortable for me. I'm here and I know everything is running good, so. You know what is important in family business is not to think that you're indispensable. That you're that nothing can run without you. Yeah. And, uh, mm. uh, it's, uh, it's one of my goals, it's to know how to translate and to... In Martinique, in my culture, uh, a lot of... S 
of knowing was not writing. It was only by words because our culture is very, has only had 150 years, the end of sla slaving one uh, 1948. So when I arriving, I was very impressed because I knew people was a lot of knowing, but they were dying with their knowing. They didn't want to translate it. And when I arrived, that was uh, something I wanted to do is writing everything. And uh, after his legacy, how to have to transfer uh, we have a new girl who works with us now, uh, Cora, she's on the book, she's uh, 30 years old, she's very young, she's a uh, fantastic uh, knowing about uh, agriculture, so that's what I'm looking for, new generation. And, and you are documenting, right? You're, right, you're writing down uh, the process. Yes, with Alex a lot, yeah. uh, and now with Omer, yes. Is she, is she part of the family, or is she... No, somewhere? she came from uh, Carmel, the same town, same village. Her grandfather used to have a rum factory, so she always wanted to work in rum factory. He's the one who who made the cac cacao cocoa in Martinique. Cacao, c'est cocoa. 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 And uh, two years ago, I contacted her and proposed her to join the team. I wanted uh, new people fresh blood, as you said. Mm. And it's interesting to work with the youngest people because they're challenging you. It's changed a lot, it's really interesting. And uh, now she, she has all the responsibility of the organic and non-organic uh, plantation of, uh, of Nesson. She looks like a baby, but she's not a baby, she she's very smart. The, the uh, yes, and she's managing the guys. So, which, in, which is not easy because our culture is very macho. Uh, so when you're a girl, when you're young, when you're not very high, it's complicated. So, but she has a very strong character. So my journey is depend on the, of the year. Uh, some, I, during the rum campaign, I always try to do minimum of two, three hours of distillation because I like it to stay in contact spend some time in my factory, going to the bottling, testing with Alex, always, even if now he's better than me, uh, and try to to do with all my people and talk with them, see if everything is going great. We have a little shop and... But I spend now too much time in my office with, with the papers and things like this, unfortunately. You have too many orders coming in. <laughs> you, you don't have enough rum with <laughs> in close off. Uh, so one so of course, you know, like we have been talking about um the, the, the agricultural work that uh, that you've been that you've been doing and I think one thing that many of us is one thing that really surprises us is that many rum makers, including yourself, you guys actually you don't just buy your sugar cane, you grow your sugar cane. Yeah. Uh, Nason, you, in order to preserve the terroir, you, you harvest them from separate fields and then you ferment them in batches, right? Yes, we try to, it's like, uh, you know, in Champagne, what we call the reserve wine. We always try to, mm. to keep a production of the last year to blend with the new year, which is important for me is to have a regularity of the production. So has, I told you when we work with Emmanuel Bourguignon, we saw that there is a lot of difference between our terroir. So we try to respect it because it's the terroir who needs us. And uh, so as I told you, I'm independent about 90, 92% and I buy only eight to 10% outside of sugarcane. Why? Because when you depend on farmers, even if they are going with a bad sugar cane, you have to take it because you don't have choice. And me, I want to have a choice. If my sugar cane is not good, I only can blame me or Cora or my team. But uh, I don't depend on someone. Yeah, but it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, but this is, you ask me uh, what is the most enjoy enjoyable part. I have, a, I'm lucky because I touch a lot of things. I'm farmers, I made chemicals, I made industry with my molinos when I crush the sugar cane. I made commercial parts. So you never have time to fed up. 
and now I'm very lucky, you know, for, for me be here, it's luxury. It's, uh, I'm uh, 40 hours from my island and I said, okay, it's good. Now, if I, I couldn't imagine 25 ago that I would be in Singapore for Seller Rum. I'm still excited when I'm in a, I was in a mall two hours ago and I was take picture with my rum <laughs> to send to everybody because for, you can imagine for us how we are part of this. Well, the topic of being a farmer, uh, you just explain to us people who don't understand, you know, this, uh, the, the science of farming, what are the qualities of, uh, of a good harvest? How do you know something is a good harvest? And how often do you get a good harvest? It really depends first of uh, what we call bricks. Bricks is the concentration of sugar that you will have in your sugar cane. Uh, you know, uh, I made a distillation two weeks ago and I didn't feel this sensation since the 2000. And I said, okay, that's why I'm working here. Because sometimes all the stars are in the same place and you make a, the sugar cane arriving, you smell it and you say, wow, okay, today it will be a good day. So the harvest for this year will be exceptional uh, compared to for me 2003 because no rain since uh, six months and the, the sugar cane is at this maximum of uh, what it can do today. And, and so, so higher, higher levels of sugar will be? Weak. Higher levels is interesting and the purity of the sugar cane so the difference between the juice and the solid part. If you are more than 80%, you know that it will be a good time. I see. And, and the morning when you're arriving, you, one of my favorite moments in when you're on the court and you smell the fermentation. And when it smells apple, you say, okay, now it's good. <laughs> and it, it's, it happens a lot this year. It was a fantastic moment. Because there's more rainfall? And no, no, no rain. Oh, no rain. Oh, no rain. No rain. rain. And you know, I asked to my guy, okay, I'm coming back in hey, June. Oh. If you have no sugar cane, you stop all the factory. I want to do the last distillation because it's very rare moments. You have to embrace this type of moment. Mm. That's what, oh. And you said, okay, that's why I work. I see. And, and no rain means more sunshine. No rain means more, more sunshine, more sugar. It will be complicated after for growing back the sugar cane, but uh, we are very lucky. We have the a water phreatic nap. How do you say? Oh. Yes. No. Yes, but uh, we have very pure water in our soil, and since one year we can uh, take it for our sugar cane. So we never, we never have enough. We never. Uh, so manquer, come on, dit manquer, putain. Uh, you never miss miss, miss water. I see. I see. Because we have what we call fertile irrigation. Yeah. So we just put in fertilizer under the roots what the sugar cane needs. Yeah. Yeah. We lose nothing in fertilizer. And and um, and water is never difficult to come back, and it's a. Uh, no, not, uh, not now that we have uh, this. And we use a lot our vinasses. Vinasses is what uh, stay after the distillation. It's the juice of distillation without alcohols, but it's really rich in potassium. So we have very big uh, tanks. We put uh, uh, water in it to have a natural pH, acidity. And when we have a natural acidity, we put it in our sugar cane land. And it's very interesting. They do it a lot in uh, Brazil. Oh, okay. and, and and you understand you have um, I think you mentioned you have more than three different sugar cane varieties. You have like eight. We have eight yeah. on uh, non-organic, yeah. and three in organic. Uh, why several? Because in case of disease, we don't want to lose all the production, so we always want to have different parts. And, and it's not like a flavor thing, right? It doesn't really affect the flavor. Or is it very good? In my opinion, the variety of sugar cane is not the most important. The most important is your soil, your terroir. It's the sugar, to the sugar cane to adapt to your terroir. Not in, now it's very, 
uh, as I said, you are in a world of communication and uh, you always have to find the new things. People said, okay, I have this variety. I have the red one, the blue one, the white one, pink one, I don't know. Okay, but where, where is growing? How is growing? So don't forget that in Bourgogne, you have the best wine in the world or the worst. And it's only one grape, it's Pinot. So I'm not focused about the varieties. And even in some little parcel of Bourgogne, you take Nuit Saint-Georges, it depends of where the grape is. Yeah. We can have fantastic wine and some so-so. Yeah, okay. um, I understand that um, so for organic farming, you, you started it sometime in 2013. Yes. So it's about, almost. about 10 years already. <coughs> um, could you, you know, just um, just um, briefly describe the, your experience with organic farming compared to? Uh, in case uh, you ask me if I remember some things about my grandfather, and the more I was working, and I was remember that he used to do uh, some culture in the middle of a sugarcane, what we call the uh, uh, service plants, and a lot with the uh, arachis pintoi or, or uh, crota, uh, Crotazema. So he was plans to fix the nitrates. And I said, okay, you have to to work on it again. And then when I study this, I understand that he was on organic things. And the other part is that you know that in uh, our highland, for the bananas, people use a lot of pesticides and uh, some of our soil are contaminated for maybe 100 years. So I wanted to have a different way of uh, thinking because I was only at four or five liters and I said, okay, tr let's try to do without these products. Uh, but I'm not a fan at, comment dire? You know now our society are black or white. I don't want to be like this. It's not one organic or non-organic. If my plant has a disease, if I need to put chemicals nitrate, I will give it. It's that when you have an headache, if you need to take an Advil, you will take an Advil. Yeah. So I prefer to talk about uh, reasonable agriculture. Yeah. Organic was interesting for us because it was a way of uh, showing our expertise in sugarcane. In terms of the, the amount of, you mentioned it was 400, 600 hours of uh, 600 hours instead of 40 hours to to make uh, to grow one batch of uh, yes of uh, sugarcane <coughs> how long does it take to grow one batch about a year or yes sugarcane uh, culture is uh, around 12 months yeah. and uh, when you uh, when the quantity of tons decrease per hectare it means that uh, the grass has growing too fast or the rats are eating your sugar cane because it's during the harvest season and the rats don't have water in the river, so they hit your sugar cane. And if you don't control this, you can lose around 30% of your production. How, how do you go to the rats? When you, uh, uh, some, some have cats and I have uh, special products with uh, coconuts because they love coconuts. I mix it with uh, avocado and uh, the avoc la graine, le the grain, the noyau. The, 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 the seed, the seed. The avocado seeds because he has a chemical reaction and the rats explode. He's a le constipe, he peut pas chier en fait. Oh, then it cannot, you cannot poo. Oh. And so basically like he eats, he eats and then he just, yeah. Like, yeah. It's not really organic, but uh, it works well. <laughs> then it's a uh, free fertilizer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I'll, I'll be sure not to eat coconut. What's an avocado simple? No, it's a special mix. It's, it's the is the middle of avocado six with some poison, some acidity that the rats doesn't arrive to digest. And we put coconuts because they love coconuts. Yeah. Well, this is, it is innovation. Were there any so in your journey, you know, doing you know experimenting with organic farming and all, you know, all these practices are there any interesting practices or discoveries that um, you know led to some interesting results 
as I told you, I didn't invent anything. I just uh, travel and see how other people were working. Uh, I learned a lot with a guy from uh, Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, who was the first to try organic bananas. So he learned us to do what we call the madre. The madre is a uh, uh, microorganism. Micro to put to the land what you take to her before the harvest. So how to work with the uh, mix of uh, milk, of uh, sugar cane, juice. Uh, this one was, was a part really, really interesting for me. I learned a lot about, about this. Mm, okay. And I mean, speaking about microorganisms, uh, I understand that you also have been using your own yeast yeah your, you cultivate your own yeast mm -hmm. first thing we we did we take the dna of all our lands all our parcel uh, it was a laboratory in bordeaux who's doing this and uh, they made the extraction of uh, uh, different uh, yeast who was interesting we try uh, around six to eight uh, yeast and we select two which for us is the more representative of our terroir. Mm. Uh, so all these yeasts are natural yeast that we extract of our land. And when we don't use this type of yeast, we use natural yeast like uh, bread yeast. Mm. Because now uh, all the new yeast industrial are made f for doing a lot of alcohols. And I don't like this type of things. Uh, it's not. It's a. Ça a tendance à uniformiser les goûts. Uh, it's. Standardized. Uh, yeah. The, the, flavor. the standard of flavor. Yeah. yeah. Then, sorry, the yeast is taken from your. The, the lead world yeast is taken from a lead, right? Yes. And they take to the. the all the sugar cane. They, they made some samples and they made the yeast by this. I see. Okay. The laboratory is Sofrolab. We made a lot of yeast for a uh, big uh, or very known uh, wine castle. And I understand some other distilleries, they use just wow yeast, uh, you know, just the yeast in them. No, and no, never. I see. So they always... It's for uh, marketing, but no. <laughs> My grandfather sometimes used to do some try only uh, sugar cane on the juice. But uh, you can have fantastic product and you can have shit. So that's this, what I was saying to you. It's uh, you are not sure of the result. It's too risky. I see. It's been twenty years since you have you developed your iconic, you know, spirit, esprit, yeah, l'esprit, and you you first you first model it to celebrate your seventieth anniversary, and it's at seventy degrees. So that's it was a joke with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, for us, you understand. You have to understand that spirit is not a marketing name. That's why I'm very not very happy about uh, what people call now uh, brut de colonne. Spirit is in our history. Uh, spirit of a column. A lot of people. We used to have a lot of uh, camboiseurs in my highland. It was people who knows very well the plants and things like this. And there is a lot of history about the spirits. We use it to mix for disease, for, uh, you know, the les combat coq, uh, uh, cockfights. cockfights. We used to make friction with it for make them for have more power. So there is, there is a lot of history about spirits. And that's why we call it like this. Uh, and 70 was interesting for us because it was a way of showing that it's not because it's a high proof that is burn only. Uh, it was interesting for us to show that we can do a good product at 70. Okay. Yeah. And um, are there any funny, interesting reactions of people when you, know, you introduce a 70? The more funny things, what uh, we made a very big fiesta. Every 10 years, we make a very big party. And they had a lot of old friends who drink 
a lot of rum, but never at 70. And they, t they took three points at 70. And all the cars, I have to call bus. And we just uh, go back in bus. And they came the morning after to take the ca their cars. <laughs> I see. And uh, I know your mother is a, is a physician as well. So, so She's a doctor. She's a doctor, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, does she any, have any thoughts about uh, the 70%? Uh, she was 100% uh, agreed. It was, a, it was a beautiful history when we decided to do this. It was the iconic battles and uh, no, no, it's a... Uh, we are very happy about uh, this and uh, now everybody thought we were crazy. All the distillers were laughing about us and now everybody has the same, so it was not a bad idea. Yeah, you started this like 20 years ago, so it's much ahead of everyone else. On the, on the, note of, on the point of uh, maturation and blending, understand that you use uh, American and French oak and um, I, I read about ex-bourbon barrels and uh, ex-cognac cask. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other casks that you use? You say you tried rum. Yes, now we use, uh, we have uh, almost 40% of new barrels with our own heat, with uh, profile, some profile, uh, because we want to have uh, in the next years 80% of rum barrels. But as I told you, I like the mix, so I still want to keep Bourbon and Cognac. And most important thing, we have now a little uh, Mizunara cask, yes. new cask, and we will have more this year. And uh, I love the result. Thank you very much. I love the result. I love the vanilla, the sweetie, the fruits. It's very uh, raffiné. Raff Comment dire raffiné? Uh, refined, maybe refined. Very subtle. Like Japan. So, so I can't really say that there's any um, you know golden ratios of um, you know cast styles that that would give you the signature na nason. We only work with two factory okay. of barrels, okay. and so we know that we have the exclusivity of the hits, and uh, we are very small, so uh, we pay a lot of attention about. Uh, what barrels we buy. For uh, cognac is first choice, mm -hmm. and uh, bourbon too. Mm -hmm. okay. Bourbon is we never buy a second refill uh, barrels. Second to bourbon or one fill. Oh, first you. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. U.S. Okay, okay. I see. And sometimes new American barrel. Okay. Also, that's that's not not too common, right? Virgin new new American always. Sometimes it's happened. Sometimes. Yes. Okay. Um, and I know that your 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 profile, um, your your profile range of you know uh, rums. You guys have been exploring different cast styles, different yes. old barrels, different. Some results were awful. Some results were awful. Yeah. Yeah. Any um. But you have... now we made a uh, strange things. We made a uh, with a tequila. It's not finished. We don't do finish. I'm yeah. against the finish. Uh, we made a long aging in tequila. It's strange. It's funny, but uh, it's not my my taste, to be honest. So you'll be applying the the, the, the right heats to your to your future. We don't. We didn't find the right heat. Uh, it's more a mixed mm. of different heat, mm. uh, and uh, to change. Don't forget that. Uh, in the past, people, a lot of people was burning the barrels. They said, wow, it's wow, but it was because the barrels was very old, so they have to give a colors in the barrels, in the liquid. So what we are, we pay a lot of attention about the barrels. Even when we, when we think that it's finished, we just said it. And you have two types of barrels. You have a aging and you have a keeping. Because after different age, what I'm looking for in my old products is the balance between the wood and the fruits. I pay a lot of attention. I don't like the product when it's too woody. So when, when it's too woody, you just have to take the liquid and put it in another barrel. And this barrel can be very old. It's just for keeping, not for aging. 
moving on, you you have celebrated your 90th anniversary yeah. last year. Uh, no, just last December. It was the most beautiful party that we ever done. Yeah, yes, yeah. the weather was fantastic. Five years ago too, but this year was... Yeah. I can't wait for the 100. We, pre we still prepare the products. Mm. We have some surprise. <laughs> what was that? Are there any um, you know, memorable parts of your, your journey in, in, in being at the Shiller that, that you would... What I like in my factory is that is the mix of people, social, colors. People don't care. They are just in Nissan to have a good moment. And I'm very proud of this. You know, it was a long period with the COVID. Everything was closed. And it was the first time they, we made a very big party in Martinique. And everybody was present. I have people from all over the world who came. I have a friend who came from the United States, from Italy, from France, and uh, we are very proud about this because we are nothing, we are very small. And when you can see all these people, you said, okay, we done the job. That was interesting. And I mean, I'm sure your granddad and, and his partner were out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I still have some rum of him. Yeah. I'm very jealous about his white rum. Yeah. Sometimes I drink some, I say, wow. A any reason, um, you know, we can't find the same, we can't make the same white rum again? Maybe, I don't know. I can't answer you. Sometimes we have rum who are not far, maybe the same level, but I can't say I made a better product. Mm. If you could let him try, you know, one of your, one of your latest series, which one do you think you would, you know, want to let him try? And uh, the spirits, yeah, all good. And uh, the next that I will do this year, okay. the new old drum, which is really interesting. We work a lot of time about it, and uh, we had a lot of uh, hope in the new product. It will be presented during uh, Whiskey Live. Uh. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. Excited. Um, we always have to focus to try to. We are never satisfied about our job. It's important. Uh, I think we can progress in the sweetness in the mouth of a white one and even in the old one more fruity, work on the balance. But uh, maybe the generation after me will arrive to do it. That's uh, what I hope. <laughs> and the next generation, would it be your, your, your children? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, you, don't, you don't run a family business by obligation. If you lead by obligation, it can't work. You have to be habité. Uh, you have to embrace it. Okay. okay, so now Sasha is a little young to do this. Vincent just came this year to help me in social media, f media things like this. So we will see. You know, in, as I told you as farmers, you don't have to be in a hurry. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it is an elaborate quote. Uh, are there any other areas that you will be keen on exploring? I, 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 I remember earlier you were telling, you were speaking about um, you know, robotics and in farming. Could you uh, elaborate? Yes, I think we can, uh, there is, but we are too small, you know, when we talk with big companies, we don't interest in them because we don't have enough money to put for research. Yes, there is a lot of tools that I want to explore who can uh, make the reproduction of the uh, work of a human. So they are working on it in the wine. Uh, we have, I think in the next four or five years, they will uh, begin to, in, to interesting about this. Don't forget that for sugarcane in a very big country, it's a country where you pay very few money the people. So there is some country, it's cheaper to cut by hand than by a machine. So things have to change. 
in my island when I pay a guy because the sugar cane is 38 euros for one ton. In Santo Domingo, one hour by plane, it's one dollars. So you can compare. Comparison is not reason, we said in French. <laughs> is there, you know, when you reflect on what you know, this little renaissance has contributed to ramps uh, and the future of this or not, is there, is there um, you know, what do you want to be remembered? I didn't contribute in the world. Uh, say, we just have a way of following our job. Yeah. And uh, another thing in French, we said small is beautiful. So we, have, we are lucky to be small. I think that the difference is that we never change our way of thinking. We try to be straight, and I think people like this because we don't change every year. It's not because uh, it's fashion that we will do it. I don't want uh, to do, I don't want to put sugar, I don't want to put coloration, uh, I don't want uh, spicy products, and I won't change this. Um, and um, okay, moving on to food pairings and Mm, my best part. Yeah. So, I think you mentioned that you have you have a favorite cocktail that you enjoy with your family. Yes, and and with our what is interesting in our food, but with our lot of culture, our food is very rich. We have a lot of things, mix of Indian, African, European. So, one day I hope that we will have a restaurant in the factory for our visitors. I'd like to reproduce this. So are there any famous um, martini dishes that you guys would have together with rums or cocktails? Cocktails, uh, tea punch, yeah. uh, long drink, uh, Mai Tai, sometimes, Daikiri, yeah. with a good barbecue, Sunday is good. And, and what kind of? And some uh, wine too. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of uh, martinique foods would that be? Uh, fish, a lot of fish. Yeah. Uh, and chicken. We are crazy about chicken. We eat chicken every time. Oh. <laughs> but more fish. We had uh, what you call the swordfish, Dorado. Uh, we have a balao, who is a baby swordfish. We eat it in tempura. It's very good. Akha is made with uh, black cod. Uh, pork too, fricassee, it's very good. Well, our our food is very rich. Yeah. And and um, and it's. I was with a famous French chef today for for lunch. Uh, ex three stars Michelin. He lives in Singapore, and we were talking about organize with you a uh, pairing with Singapore food and rum. It would be very interesting because it's similar to our food and I think there is something to do. But yeah, our, our food is also very oily and weak. So <laughs> it'll be, yeah, that'll be interesting. One time, Yeah. Oh. Chili crab. I think he's doing something uh, now for uh, with Tesro. Okay. Oh, he's doing that works quite a bit with Fred, no? Yes, we has a lot of tattoos and... Yeah, about, yeah it's not bad. Crazy guy of bike. Mm. He's doing twenty thousand kilometers every year with his oh, bike. Like a, yeah, like a cycling. Yes, uh, true. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, what's the easiest co rum cocktail that we could make at home? Okay, you take just two spoon of brown sugar, just a little lime, rum, and just one ice. It's okay. Uh -huh. There's a tea punch. Oh, there's a tea punch. <laughs> oh, so so simple. Wow, okay. But don't forget one thing. A lot of alcohols, you put a lot of lemon, a lot of flavor, because your alcohol is neutral. Uh. With rum, like I show you when you smell with your hand, you don't need to put too much things. You will kill the taste. You, you always need to have the taste of a sugar, of grass, of lemon, which is really interesting in this product. And my last question for you is for visitors who are coming to Martinique. You send me an email, I organize everything for you. <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay. Uh, the island is really interesting because of the difference of aging. You have tropical forest in the north, really big tropical forest. 
and in the south you have a little desert and uh, in one hour by cars the difference of viewing is really interesting really so for the rum factory I recommend people to do the maximum because you will understand the importance of the microclimates during the between the the rum factory that's really interesting and, and you said highlands right so so um, the north is higher yes we have a volcano yeah. who's, uh, we have an eruption uh, in uh, 1902 yeah. we have uh, 30,000 people killed at Saint Pierre who was the capital that's why it's not the capital anymore so the volcano is around uh, 1,400 meters we have uh, little uh, mountains too les pitons du Carmet and in the, it's the south, it's more flat, except to the Diamant, it's a beautiful beach, where you have a little mountain. But all the rest of the island is flat. The highlands would be cooler climate? Or? We have just one climate, okay. two climates, uh, rain period and uh, sunny periods. Now we are in the harvest, in the, what we call the Carême, is the most uh, hottest season. It's around uh, minimum 28, 29 to 35 degrees, and no rain during uh, three months, three, four months. It's, it's dry, or is it? Yes, really dry. Dry. Mm. Wow. Okay. And in December, more humidity. How do you find the weather in, in Singapore? Little humid yes. today. <laughs> Not, no, the only problem is that we are always in a yeah. air conditioner and you get out, so every time it's complicated uh, when we are the factory we are always outside yeah. so it's easier okay. it's super humid here or the temperature is not super high but no but what is interesting here is, but even if big buildings you always have some some park some green parts green space and it's really interesting and the way you have on every details, the city is uh, really clean compared to some town of my island. In my island, we sometimes we don't understand how precious is our climate or uh, our beach, and uh, we are like uh, fools. We don't understand this, and we have to because uh, we will have problems with the levels of the sea and things like this. We have to be careful. It's changed right now with a new generation. Uh, we are more. For the bad or for, uh, for the good. Okay. For the good, yes. Sasha is a. Uh, when I put my turn on the water, I always said, okay, turn on the water. Uh, and we lose it, so it's. Yeah. We have to be positive, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The younger generation, there's certainly more climate conscious. I hope. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much. For it was a pleasure. Thanks to you. Uh, sorry, my English. I, I lost a lot of my English because I don't practice. No, I, uh, I understand you perfectly. I didn't think for expression because I want to tell you more. Okay.